everyone, it's Anne from Annalise's Creates, Annalise's Creations. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. I'm here to do the my process of the Explorations of Me, which was started by Cindy Utter and Gina Ahrens. And I will post links down at the bottom to both of their YouTube channels, as well as to their Facebook groups. All right, so if you're interested in joining any of the groups, please go check them out. All right, so this month's Explorations of Me is to list or, you know, show your, what your hobbies are, all right? And I used to have a lot of hobbies before fibromyalgia took a lot of that away, but I try not to let fibromyalgia win. So art is the most important part of all for me as a hobby. So what I'm gonna do first before I list everything or paste everything down is I'm gonna do a background, all right? So enjoy my process about the background, all right? So since I'm doing, we're doing things, my hobbies, etc. I thought I would put a face that I did in the, um, oops, I just cut her face off. Oh, well, I don't know if you remember the faces series I did for a Facebook group. I'll post a link down at the bottom to this original video and I'm going to glue this girl down figured I'd use her for somewhere and unfortunately I'm cutting out the, I'm yeah oh well it's okay so I'm gonna put her in this corner and I may fix her a little bit along the way touch her up a little bit but first things first I'm gonna glue her down I think I'm going to use a Lean's Tacky glue for that. All right, so in no particular order, all right, I still love to collect things with roses on them. Uh, I collect a lot of vintage plates as well as transfer wear. And I, I do have a rose garden, but it's looking very sad because I used to be able to take care of it better. And now with fibro, it just does, I'm just not able to do it anymore, to crouch down very often and bend over and all that kind of stuff to get into there and to, to prune them and to feed them and all that. Yeah, so I don't get to do that very often anymore. But anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and glue these roses down. I'm not sure where I want to put them yet. I like them. I think I like them in this corner. Anyhow, so I'm going to put these roses down. So this will represent that I do love flowers, even though some of them I am allergic to. So I've got the word flowers. So I'm going to put flowers right about here, like that. And I'm gonna use my And you're also probably gonna hear my fan. I forgot to turn that off. Because my, my microphone is very sensitive and it does pick up that noise. And it's to me, it's really annoying when you're playing a, a video back and you kind of hear that in the background. It just makes a lot of annoying noise. So I'm trying to remember to turn it off. I should just put a note on somewhere on my workspace, turn off fan. <laughs> so I'm gonna consider flowers as one of my hobbies, or at least it used to be one of my hobbies. I don't take tend to my roses as often as I should anymore, but yeah. Okay, another hobby 
or you could say interest, hobby, is I love to read when I do have time. So next, I'm gonna add some words because I'm not probably not gonna have a whole lot of room Victor, for everything on the page. Mr. Victor Crafter sent me this beautiful napkin and I cut part of it out because I want the Eiffel Tower in the background. And the Eiffel Tower is going to represent travel. I would like to put this somewhere around here and I really should have put it down first, but I didn't. So I think I'm gonna put it here. Right about. So this is going to represent travel. So I'm going to wor write the word, I may not write it, but glue the word travel down. What I do is, as a suggestion for those of you that might be new to collage or to mixed media, what I do is I subscribe to a couple of magazines and it's not necessarily to read them, but to cut out stuff out of them. I might peruse the articles a little bit and then they end up becoming cut up. They get cut up. And they get up cut, cut up for words. I, I'll go through while I'm watching TV or, you know, listening to music or whatever, I will go ahead and cut them up. All right, so one of my hobbies is I like to go and wine taste. And where I live, I live close to an area called Livermore Valley, California. It's the next, it's been growing into basically the next wine valley in California other than Napa Valley. A lot of people tend to go to Napa to go wine tasting and yet Napa Valley has become very expensive and they charge a lot more to taste wine whereas in Livermore Valley it's not as expensive. It's still owned by a lot of the mom and pop vineyards not just a bit some we have a couple of big vineyards there but most of them are still pretty small so wine and chocolate are kind of my hobbies yes you're gonna say chocolate well because there are different types of chocolates and I like to taste all kinds of different kinds of chocolates that's my problem I probably would be thin if I didn't eat so much chocolate <laughs> but I love it. Okay, so I have board games and I should have put video games up as well because before I really got back into art, I was playing a game, online game called World of Warcraft. And then because of art and other things, because they charge a fee to play and it's not very cheap. And with, and with my son going through school there were certain things I had to cut back and I found that art was my therapy more than video games were and that um, yeah it helps with getting taking my mind off the pain more than video games but board games I still like to play occasionally if my kids are home and they're in the mood to play a game I'll get out some of our old board games. So I put board games down. And next, I like to go antique shopping. Now, this is, you know, antiques could be furniture, they can be uh, dishware, it, you know, basically anything. And a lot of people think of vintage now versus antique. And I'm still old school and I still call it, a lot of times I'll call it antique shopping. And I like to do that a lot because that's how I find my ephemera. Um, old photographs, family photographs that people are getting rid of become good things for mixed media art. Yeah, so I like to go antique shopping and I'm not sure where I'm going to put this because I don't want it up there. I may have to write this out or get a smaller thing of it, but I do want to put this up here so maybe I'm not sure where I'm going to put it, so the most important thing right now to get on here is art. So I'm going to cut out the art one first. What I did was, as I cut out these letters to 
spell out the names from magazines and then I glued it onto some leftover watercolor paper because I don't like to waste anything. So that's what I did. I think I'm gonna go around this a little bit. Get a little more interest here. There we go. So art. Okay, making it, creating it. Basically, I should have said arts and crafts or mixed media, but it was too long to spell out. <laughs> I really didn't feel like spelling it out, and I didn't have any magazines that said mixed media in them. And the ones that I magazines that I do keep for reference, I don't like always cutting up. So yeah. So this one's gonna go down about here. Because I want that to kind of stand out. All right, and now for the antique shopping. And I was hoping that I'd have something a little smaller than that, and I don't. So let's see how I can put this down. Or I'm not covering everything up here. I'll put it here. And then I have a smaller thing word for shopping. So I think I'm going to omit that one. I'm going to do antique. I'm going to use a Sharpie this time. To take some of my now that the the napkins are dry, I kind of like using. I'll show you what I mean. If I can find it. Yeah, here we go. I like using the decoupage antique glue medium um, because it has more of a yellowing color to it, and I like to do that over my napkins because it kind of gives it an age. Whoops, an aged look. I didn't need to put that much down. But it kind of gives it an aged look because it does yellow and I do like that yellow effect. So I'm going to go over my flowers, my flower napkin here with the yellow and with the de antique decoupage. And then I'm going to do it over the Eiffel Tower there and that lamp, street lamp, street light. I may have to glue in down with um, Aline's tacky glue later because when I close it, it's got to bend. Let's see if I can get it to bend. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to dry this off and then I'll be back. All right, so I'm going to take my Raspberry Distress ink again and I'm just going to add some to this dabber thingy. I don't know what you call it, but. And I'm going to lightly go over this paper, white paper, with it. I'm going to go and I'm going to outline some of these things. And then I'm going to touch up the girl here a little bit. crystal glitter so I'm gonna add some into her hair all right so since I like my bling I've got to have my bling all right so I'm gonna go ahead and add these pretty bling heart because of course I've got to have my bling and this will represent jewelry that I like to collect Kind of a hobby of mine as well. And I have this flower that I die cut using my Sizzix Big Shot and I put a gem kind of in the middle. It didn't quite go in the middle but that's okay. And I'm going to glue it here to her. To her. I've got to outline flowers here. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed participating 
showing you my process of the explorations of me and that you'll come back and visit me and don't forget to check out Cindy Utter's YouTube channel for her explorations of me as well as Gina Aarons's YouTube channel and I'll also post a link to both their channels down in the description box below as well as their Facebook group so don't forget to go Please check them out. listen to some music because it's good for your mind body and soul and thanks for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.